It's all about the bees today, country style. Guys, I love the way that these turned out and I can't wait to show you my style of crafting in each one of the projects. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm. I hope that you will subscribe if you are new. And let's go ahead and get started with the first project. All right, for this next project, these are all of the supplies I am going to use. Uh, for my bee body, I'm going to use one of these leftover pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take all of this stuff off. I'm not going to worry about the back because I'm going to cover that. And uh, to make the stripes, the yellow stripes of the bee, I'm just using some leftover vinyl that I had in my stash. I'm just going to cut it into strips with my paper trimmer. For the wings, I'm I'm using two uh, wooden hearts that I had from Dollar Tree for the uh, fate or for the head of the bee. I'm going to use a circle out of this. It's a wood pile pack that I've had uh, for you know a couple of years. I got this at Hobby Lobby and uh, for uh, to attach paper to the wings. What I'm going to do is use this scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to do the uh, Mod Podge heat transfer method. So I have my Mod Podge and then I also have my mini iron, which is my Cricut mini press. Uh, and I have been asked, why do, do I prefer this Iron on method over the wet method, what works better? I don't know, I just like it better. I don't get as many bubbles, so I just prefer this iron on method. Uh, and then for the antennas, what my plan is, is I'm going to use some of this garden wire that I got from the 99 cent store. I'm going to drill uh, just a couple of small holes in the head of the uh, bee, and uh, then I'm going to curl the wire to make the antennas. So I have my uh, one inch vinyl strips uh, cut just with my cutter. And uh, I was trying to figure out, you know, I wanted to get my stripes even. So I thought the best way would be, you know, how the pumpkin kind of curves down here. I'm just gonna follow that line. And um, I always keep my extra vinyl uh, for projects like this because, you know, it's, it's not big enough to make uh, another project, but yet it's big enough to make little projects like this. Anyway, and it's just really kind of like a sticker. So, um, so I'm just going to go along the line right there and then just kind of pull, pull that to the back where it just kind of sticks over just like a sticker. And then I'm going to do the other one down here and then that one in the middle. So then here I have my B stripes on my B body. When I have a pattern for that I want to get straight, I just make sure and line it up the best that I can. And usually I will trace it out on the front so that I can get uh, the exact cut that I want. I'm going to put a thin layer over my wooden pieces, uh, these hearts, and uh, I uh, pay special attention to get all the way around the edges so that when my paper, uh, when, I, when it heats up, it adheres all the way around whatever I am Mod Podging on. And so then I let that completely dry 
and then I will Mod Podge uh, heat transfer my paper onto these wooden hearts. You know, sometimes things look a little bit different in your head than what they turn out. Uh, I'm not really happy with the way that this small dot looks on these hearts. So I'm going to just try to, uh, you know, give them some distressing and uh, just add some of the lines and different things. And hopefully I will like that better. So what I did is I have this black ink pad and I just went around the edges just to give it some color. I got this uh, black ink pad. It's part of a set that I got from Hobby Lobby. Uh, it's part of a set. Anyway, so then now I just took, see, I like this much better. Uh, the heart was, it was too, I don't know, the dots just, it just didn't do it for me. So I just took my uh, fan brush and a little bit of black paint and I've just made like a faux uh, plaid pattern on it and uh, I like that much better because it kind of breaks up those polka dots and it gives it where they're not just so dotty. I know that that doesn't make a lot of sense but I'm like it was too much polka dot. I don't even know if that's even a word. Before my little B, the way that it was all shaped, I didn't want it to be as uh, dotted as it was. So I like that much better. I just added uh, some white doodles around my head of my B, and then I'm just gonna take my uh, black Sharpie marker and just go around. I know it doesn't show up too much on camera, but it does show up in real, you know, in the finished project. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of doodling around the edge of like mostly the yellow because I know that it's there. Going to add some black splattering to uh, my pieces and then I'll go back over it with white. If you are not familiar with paint splattering, I have a stiff brush and a stick and I have my paint. I run the stick over my bristles toward my body where the paint projects on the project. I make sure that my table is covered or my area is covered because paint splattering is messy and it will leave some splatters on the area. And I will uh, make the white doodling a little bit darker just using some white paint around the head of the bee. And after I got the splattering on I said oh I want to go ahead and add some more doodling on the yellow stripes just to define it a bit more. And I just gave all of my pieces a coat of this gloss varnish. This is the one that I like to use. To make the antennas, I have about a five inch piece of wire, maybe four and a half to five inch piece. Uh, this, again, this garden wire came from the 99 cent store in the garden section. And so I'm just going to take one in and I'm taking my needle nose pliers and I'm just going to kind of start rolling it on itself. Uh, just kind of making it look a little wonky. I don't want it to be perfect. So just kind of making a circle like this so that it looks, you know, a little wonky, a little whimsical. And so I just want to kind of see how, how far I need to go down. And uh, I had drilled two holes in the top of my um, my little wooden circle here and then I'm going to get some E6000 and I'm going to glue those antenna, antennae or antenna, their antenna, their little, you know, things at the top to this right here. to assemble our B and so everyone has their own you know idea of how their B should look so I'm going to use a combination of E6000 as well as hot glue to put on my wings and my head.
And I am just taking strips of checkered fabric as well as just different ribbons and trims, cut them off about four inches. I'm just gonna layer them all together and make a messy bow. small sign for my B and what I'm using is my little uh, label it's just a little punch this is a real estate sign it, this is just a punch that I've had uh, for many years I've decided to use I'm also using my fine sharpie marker and to attach it to my B what I'm going to use is one of these safety pins now um, I had just bought the safety pins they were all silver uh, they came in this little case I got them from Walmart and so uh, what I did is uh, I rusted them up using my friend Linda from Faith Chick 77 on YouTube uh, I used her recipe of how to rust small metals I will have have a link for that in the description box if you would like to uh, see that video. Anyway, I'm just going to write be kind. I'm going to do my happy dots. I'm also going to do like the little white swoosh in the uh, happy dot of the letter and I'm going to doodle it up with my fine sharpie marker. Then I'm going to use my black ink to distress it and then I'll attach it to my bee. Alright, for this next project, I am using one of these cones from Dollar Tree as well as this chunky yarn that I picked up. I think I got this from Hobby Lobby. I'm not quite, or Walmart. Hobby Lobby or Walmart. I've had it for a few years, so I'm not quite sure. And then also some felt. Alright, I'm going to cut this in, uh, not quite in half, you know, just where I kind of see it. I just am using my serrated knife. I keep one of these in my craft room for projects like this and just to kind of avoid uh, it breaking I'm just kind of going around and just cutting the styrofoam. So then now I'm left with two pieces just like this. I'm going to take the bottom of my cone and just take a white marker and just cut out the bottom or just trace out the bottom on the black felt and then adhere it to the bottom of my cone. I'm going to take my chunky yarn and I'm just going to start somewhere and start gluing it around my cone. I didn't worry about painting it because I'm going to uh, get the yarn as close as I can so that none of the white will show through. I'm just using hot glue to attach my yarn and uh, in doing this, I did burn my fingers, so I'm going to use my uh, finger protectors as well as my uh, mask spatula that I got from the Dollar Tree in the uh, like beauty supply section. Anyway, you can get these uh, finger protectors also at uh, Dollar Tree, or you can get them in Amazon. I have them listed in my Amazon shop.
and here where I started and then I uh, went back around the cone or the uh, beehive uh, bee skeep, whatever one chooses to call it. I'm going to cut off a piece of that rope and I'm going to glue it right there so that I do not have that white space. When I get to this part, uh, I just continue to wrap it around and then just kind of wrap the yarn, uh, kind of forming it into a peak uh, so that I get the, you know, smooth over or like the oval part of the bee skeep or the bee hive. So then now I'm just going to cut the little hole, a hole opening for the bee skeep or beehive. I'm just going to do that using some felt and my marker just to draw that out and then I'll cut it out with scissors. Before I glue my little openings down to my beehives, I just am taking some sisal twine. It's just something that I get from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to wrap it around just to give it some extra country touch. Let's make this cute can arrangement using a vegetable can and some cute flowers. Now these are the supplies that I'm using, uh, some different fabric. Now this is the can I'm using. It was a vegetable can. I really think it was a Bush's baked bean can just for reference. And uh, I'm showing you my uh, can opener. I got that off of Amazon. I will have it linked in the description box below because I was able to get off that uh, can without having to go to my kitchen and, you know, put it under my electric one that uh, took off the 
lid of the can, the bottom and the top without any sharp edges. I'm also using some different flowers. Okay, now guys, I know that I got some questions on this uh, when I had posted the picture, what I did, this can was a pretty flimsy, and so I just bent it, and then I just took my hammer and just pounded it, not too much, down there at the bottom. And uh, then now what I'm sharing is I took my crop a dial um, that is uh, also linked in my Amazon store, and I just put two holes in the side of the can, and then I p gave it two coats of uh, plaster color chalk paint, and I didn't have any issues with it, you know, like scraping or anything. Chalk paint is really good for this kind of stuff. Then I just used my fan brush and some drizzle gray paint, and I just gave it like a faux plaid border. Then I took my flat paintbrush and some milk chocolate paint and then I just shaded it just to give it a little more color and a little distress look that I like then um, once that was all done then I took my uh, stiff brush and I took some black paint as well as some golden yellow Americana paint I paint splattered the whole can and then that is what I did for the paint now to give it um, the decal I, I cut this off on my Cricut. It is Be Kind. Um, I have a Cricut machine and so I can create, you know, different decals like this and, uh, you know, the font is probably Gel Dotica. Uh, and so I love that font. I do have found some more dotted fonts. If you're interested, they are in my link tree that is also in the description. There is a link uh, for that where you can find my list of dotted fonts over on my blog. Click on the font name. It'll open up to diffont.com and you can download it to your computer from there. All right, so uh, for right now, what I'm doing, I had had this wire. Also some fine Excelsior, I love that so much. That wire I got from uh, the 99 cent store a while back. Uh, anyway, so I just put that on there to make a hanger and I had already uh, stuck my flowers in there but as I was working with it making my bow my flowers were coming out so I'm going to go back later and add some styrofoam all right to make my bow I have some of this creepy cloth that is from Halloween from the Dollar Tree I just cut off some strips of that as well as just some different fabrics some lace muslin all that kind of stuff just to make a messy bow and then I just stuck it there tied all of it together and just stuck it there on the side and as I said when I was working you know trying to put my bow on my flowers are coming out so I'm like I need to put some styrofoam in there so this styrofoam I like to get from the Dollar Tree when I can find the ones that are already in the blocks but you know that's just the way it is um I also uh, just to, for a decorative touch I just added some black rickrack around the uh, top of the can and I love of that so much it just really I think kind of just finishes off this cute uh, can that is so versatile there's so many different versions and uh, I enjoy making these and we'll be making more Okay, these are the uh, supplies I'm using for this honey hive. Uh, this is an egg that is from the Dollar Tree leftover from Easter time. I'm just going to be adhering the paper to that to make my hive. For my paper, I'm using this scrapbook paper out of this pack. It is barn wood pretty too. Uh, this is from Hobby Lobby and I'm using the uh, this color I have the stripe, the buffalo check, this pattern right here, as well as the dot. And then for the hole, I just have uh, just some black cardstock. This particular egg has a metal bunny on it, so I'm gonna take that bunny off 
and use it, you know, keep it for next year for some other projects. Anyway, so I'm going to attach my paper onto this side using my adhesive tape glider. Uh, it is just something, it's like double-sided tape. Now you can get these in the craft store or I do have them listed in my Amazon shop. All right, so I ripped the edges to give it, uh, you know, just the torn, distressed look. So then now I'm using my Vintage Photo uh, ink. This is one of my favorites. Y'all have seen me use this before. If, if you're new to me, this is my favorite way to distress. Uh, and so I'm just going to go around the torn edges just to give it some distressing along each of the papers. I'm going to go ahead and lay out the papers the way that I want them on my egg or a beehive. And so then once I get them all down, then I'll cut around the outside to the shape of the hive. So uh, when I was attaching the paper, I needed to glue it down a little bit more. So I'm just using this uh, Tombow glue. It's just something that I had on hand when I was doing uh, card making and scrapbooking and stuff. And so um, I didn't do a very good job putting on the uh, double stick tape on there. Some of it was kind of like some of my paper wasn't here down all the way. So I'm like, yeah, I probably should have just used glue instead of the, the, uh, double sided tape. But anyway, it's what I had. And so, uh, I like using it. And, uh, but since I want all of this paper to stay down, I needed to go around the edges. And so I'm just using this, uh, Tom, Tombow aqua glue. It's just a paper glue, liquid glue. That's what it's called. And once that dries, I am going to go around the edges with that distress ink and uh, distress it all the way. And then I'll take my black Sharpie marker, go around, do some doodling, and then I'll make the hole for my beehive. I just tore the edges of the black cardstock uh, for the hole of my bee hive. And then now I'm just taking some white ink and just going around the hole, the edges, just to, you know, kind of give it some definition. To use my white paint and my liner brush just to give it some doodles around the hole, just eh, for character and cuteness. For my bow, for my hive, I'm going to use some of this mesh ribbon and I found this at Dollar Tree um, a few months ago. I only found one roll. It's so cute. Uh, just the way that it's just so, it looks kind of coastal to me. 
<laughs> I don't like netting, uh, that kind of thing. And so, uh, be on the lookout, you know, at your Dollar Trees. I don't know if you've kind of found this. Oh my goodness. It's so cute. I don't know if you could see it, uh, you know, on the camera, but it just looks, uh, webby. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to give lots of texture to my bow. Okay, guys, so what I'm using for my honey hive is I'm using some of these already cute bees. I got them in a four pack from Hobby Lobby. They're already painted with the yellow and the black and everything. All I did was take my black Sharpie marker and just put some, you know, eyelashes on it and just extra doodling just to, you know, give it my style. So I'm going to be putting that on the honey hive as well, as well as my hole here. Yeah, my hole for my honey hive. And then here is uh, the messy bow that we made. And uh, what I'm gonna put those on with is some of these self-adhesive uh, foam squares. I had, you can get these in the scrapbooking section. And so it just gives a little dimension to uh, my projects. And so it gives a little lift to it, a little dimension like I mentioned. And so then that's gonna look really cute. Also what I'm gonna do is just write, be blessed. Uh, for making um, a sign for my honey hive. To give it a more rustic look, I'm gonna take my paper and I'm going to give it the torn edges, just kind of hollowing uh, around the paper just give it the torn edges and to get the ragged edge like that um, I tear toward my body so that it gives more of the paper exposed like that so that when I distress it it will give me more of the torn look. For my hanger, I'm using some of this sisal twine and I have 10 of these wooden beads that I am using. This is from a garland that was left over from Hobby Lobby from the fall season. I ended up just putting seven uh, beads on this sisal twine. And so then wherever the hole was, I'm gonna go ahead and poke through that. And then that is what is going to, uh, I'm gonna thread that through. I'm just using my paper piercer. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to just thread this through and just uh, you know figure out how far I want it to go down. And then I'm going to just attach it here at the top because the bow is going to cover it anyway. So there's no need for me to be all fancy and all that stuff because the bow is going to cover it.
realized as I was laying my stuff out that I was going to write B, uh, B E E, you know, for the little honeybees. But anyway, it is what it is. I don't want to redo it, but that was my intention. I wanted to kind of tie the whole bee theme in together. <laughs> 